two eighteen thirteen sixty two thousand and twelve put on the S and P five hundred. The thing that we're looking at is when we look at uh, the E mini Nasdaq one hundred patterns, how they had reversals here. Then what's really relative though is how the S and P has the top reversal as well and it comes right down here in this price level because when we look at the actual price trend that is the key and that's going to look like well let's do something like this for now let's clear that let's let you see the the, the patterns that each one had this is the nasdaq 100 here and this is the S&P 500 here. And the S&P 500, it starts. You can see where this line right at that 1338 was broke. But once again, from the high side of it, you're consolidating the broader ranges from where these lows started. So really, your breakouts were here and you had breakouts here and support levels that were over here in the consolidation now that you have this pullback here you're not breaking this major uh, part of the trend yet so you've got more you, you had these earlier reversals like so okay we know that but then look at where it burned and we are at a uh, an area of an intraday level that that top had broke below that diagonal trend line right here at the bottom and that when you look at the price changes you look for the exhaustion peak and the exhaustion peak would mean that you would roll back over and you'd come down to lower price levels and test these support price levels but it would be part of the overall reversal meaning that you're finding support and you're going right back up in a directional price movement in ascending value this is what resistance levels look like right across here and this is the lower end of that this is the midpoint that's where you come up and you put the highs in but now if the move is going to reverse, you will not close above the half bar equation. You just won't. And that's going to determine, and, and same thing on the NASDAQ uh, 100 here. So relative to the S&P 500 contract is a 1360 put in the money. So how am I going to steal the bid? All right. And... I'm going to look at doing that one way only. And I know that I'm going to put my bid out there because if I break up higher in the S&P E-mini futures, 500 tier, this is going to drop down. So I'm going to put my bid here at 1870 below that 2390 low because of the way that we've been channeling in the trend. So that would be where the best wholesale price at 11.08 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2-6-2012, within the trend cycle and the price trend cycle or the range of that cycle. And what you're looking for is how to mark to market the weighted buyer and the weighted seller. So, you know, who's wanting out the door first? So as we put in exhaustion highs, the the peaks right here, you're, you're on the outside of it. So reversals come back and break lower lows and they would come down and test lower support levels all the way through here. And we have two hours, it's 11.09 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2-6-2012. And we're at core resistance level in the E-mini S&P 500. 
once again, it's how do I buy put options, 218, 1360 put. Not only that, we'll feature. Here we go you live. We're live, so so you know. Now, what would you like to say? On the S&P 500, 1340 put, 317. This is the one I'm looking at. And this is the one that has a volume of 9779. 9,779. Now, what other discoveries on high volume put options did you discover? Are you asking me, Mario? Yes. Did you discover any other high volume put options at different strike prices? I just found one here. 6,100 uh, contracts. Right. That That is... That is the two that I have noticed and 1340 put March is very heavily traded with the big number of contracts correct March so I have let me ask you this can you repeat a bigger volume contract like you're saying like in a block of 645 contracts at a time. Look at this one here at 9,600. People are buying below the market. That's a long ways below the strike price. Considering that the S&P is at 1341, only down 2.94 handles, right? Mm -hmm. And the bull rally has been strong, hasn't it? It was. Still is. Right. So therefore, when we look at the prices, that is a heavy contract that they're trading now. What was the one that you were talking about that you liked the very best? Which one was it? Well, we looked at the 1360, 1350 February, and okay. we look at the 1340 Wait March. Wait a second, contract. 1350 February, here we are. That has a total volume of, I'm sorry, February. That's March. So, yeah, you're right. This one here on the S&P, 1860, 1850, 21, 50, 17, 90. Look at that. See, and that's that 1350 put, as you've described. That's 218. Do you confirm that? Uh, but look at the spread. 1790 by 1960 so how do you get in I know that's what the school is about right how do I steal that bid I'm going to give you a bid right now based on that futures ticking up here in the video okay that's the bid and ask there but here's the futures that e-mini one right here everybody see e-mini S&P 500 futures now, using that, you can see that when that ticks up and breaks higher again, that you're going to come up and you're going to see if you have a lower high in here or not at that reversal point. If you do, you're going to hold the lower end of that bid. But the bid and ask, 1790 by 1960, is how do I make the market between the public in this options? And why are options so different today than any other period in the exchange model history within that bid and that ask and how does the public get a fair chance at that you don't have to worry any longer all you need to do now is watch us do it live based on using the e-mini S&P 500 futures and the strike price of 1350 you can see what the spreads are however there are other spreads that I like and let's take a look at another February contract. Do you see anything at all where you see any 15,000 blocks of contracts anywhere in any strikes? Uh, let me take a look. I can see where some of the... And are you asking February regular? Yeah, in a February regular... Uh, expiration because the weeklies are going to fluctuate this one here is it is that 1350 that I have with 257 traded right now on an intraday level 
okay so basically I'm going to be looking for prices that go well let's say the biggest volume ones that I've found I also found right here on a 317 1375 put on the S&P because the S&P is in an overbought level the bull, it's in a cautionary bull level right now in the shorter term because markets have ran too high too fast. And there's going to be exhaustion highs that we will experience within the new bull trend cycles and what the reversals look like intraday. I'd like to show, though, that the S&P 500 is 1341.8. There's no big selling here. However, it's how you get to buy spreads in these strike prices. Look at that one. In the money. Look at it. 1,000 contracts. That's a lot of contracts. So somebody the, wanted to the own The winner it. for February puts is 1,300 uh, strike. 6,813 contracts were traded. Uh, and that is for February irregular. All right, I'm just looking at that. I'm going to go over there. This March one, all of these March ones seem to be getting a lot of volume as well. And the spreads and the bid and the ask are all similar. Some are wider than others in the bid and ask. March, I have very heavily uh, bought today. 1340 yes. put is the winner at 9000 859 but mm -hmm. 1275 put is right behind it at 9692 and right. then goes the 1300 march put at 6995 wow. and then the 1335 at 6137 oh here is your uh 218 1300 put trading 6813 contracts that you mentioned for the February one that's the famous high volume one right that's correct so people would believe that yes markets can get overbought but there's going to be a reversal side of the market in a bull rally and you've learned what the bull rally structure versus the bear rally structure is like have you not yes I did that's right and so when you're looking at uh, trend channels, per se, uh, what would you rate when you're looking at the reversal side of the tape right now? It's more in a diminishing price zone, not an expanding price zone. And the bull side is expanding and continues to expand at these higher resistance levels that eventually what you're learning right now would create exhaustion price levels. Is that true? Uh, this is true and also from the last time we review indices with you. We were talking about the um, uh, a pretty good um, spread between the close and the open and the high and the low. What happened right. today, uh, the put side, even though there is a uh, a, a pretty significant movement uh, is from 1337.52 on a low side to 1344.32 on a high. It's a pretty significant movement, but puts did not really give much away, neither calls. So the spread between the uh, high and the low is, it, I would say, disbalance in terms of uh, in in relationship to the price, right? Look at the three seventeen twelve thirty five put right here on my screen. Eighteen hundred in volume traded. That's quite a bit in volume in those below that strike price. If you take a look at it, that's a hundred handles below the market at twelve thirty five. So that's below the last major support levels. In the S&P 500, um, 
I would like to know from you on that kind of volume you can see where people are piling in because that's good volume these days compared to other days is it not uh, it is significant and not only the volume the number of contracts for it is right. significant look at the 317 1250 put 3406 intraday traded at 11 23 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and we can see where people are wanting to put a lot of risk on for protection otherwise or the, they're making market so our whole when we take a look at that on an intraday level that's ex very nice levels and that 1275 again 9600 traded that these are all 317s my goodness now let's take a look at the 1300 for March as she had talked the about the most heavily traded one 6900 right here for March or yeah 317 regular look at that right no not for March but for February but yes it's it's yeah. also really heavy traded both even for March. have the same both have the same February and March right that's correct because here's the February 1300 so they're buying the inline month of the expiration and then they're buying the outside March month um, and both strikes on heavy volume and why but is that because they might think that the 218 contract falls quicker so they bought that but then they came over here and they bought the March one same strike same everything okay and that's the March 1300 and you can see the resemblances again here's the March one you can see up there it says 218 2012 1300 put in the title bar SPX.X there now 310 by four dollars what a big markdown 6800 of them bingo guess what look up my pointer 317 same strike just a month out and you can see 6995 of those traded so both months are heavily heavily getting some volume action and it's not nearly like the volume it used to have before but at least somebody's in there or someone is buying a big block of puts both February and March we just went through the video now the thing about it is the S&P itself 500 is not displaying any breakdowns here okay what it is doing is it's making the highs now we're gonna go ahead and put that right there because as long as we're closing below it and it's still slanting to go lower it still look for it to come down here and break the low and not only that from this peak high right here would be the middle of it and you'd put that right there and so that red bar has to come down as it is and break through that price channel that price here on a 1300 put that's been traded heavily I'm going to put a bid out there at eight dollars and seventy pennies for intraday that is going on 11:26 a.m. Pacific Standard Time once again we were going through the S&P put option spreads with some of our MMT students that have been trained to be an index option pro and whatever index it is or sector or indice it really doesn't matter what matters is the level of wholesale entry and understanding directional price movements because when you're buying wholesale here then the then the movement here has to go your way and the only reason why we're looking at the 1300 foot was to feature where the index is in the futures S&P e-mini because we like watching those and we like watching this bid and this ask there's no big price spreads here so 860 880 would be about right below the market 
here just in case we were to come up and break these tops and we could that's that 1339 handle or whatever these tops right up here okay so we're gonna watch the areas that we're currently in as far as your trend cycle in the price trend price cycle so we know what it is on that interday level between the buyer and the seller and you are taking the values between the between the two parties both you're you're making money off of the buyer and you're making money off of the seller in the market both ways 14 10 by 15 50 1300 dollar put we're going to be focusing the other one that we liked in March is going to be the there's a bigger volume one that we liked that a weekly would have at some point the weekly volumes that are going to come into play will get priced in the market at some point here's that 1340 that's got 10,000 contracts 2730 now granted that that is close to the e-mini S&P 500 and once again MMT the bid look at the low spread look at that spread look at the volume size now you mentioned that you seen some big volume counts what were they for quite few contracts but the winner is March 1340 put that's what I have right here right okay that's right. the winner all right and that has a close of 27 a low 2670 and a high of 2929 current bid is 2730 by 2910 now how do I get in there well if I break up above this this diagonal trend line I'm going to drop this bid here right now to twenty four dollars and sixty pennies on the lower bid based on the fact that I would have to break up through resistance levels and challenge higher highs and when I challenge higher highs my price levels over here are going to drop and I'm going to get the wholesale bid does that make sense yes so this is a 1340 put there isn't much price spread between it the bid and the ask are wide and most people don't know how to get that price entry as a market maker we do if we steal the lower bid then we're over here controlling the ask and the public will have to buy it from us when they want it so based on the fact that we would break this resistance level we would put out and we got that volume going off $28 $28 they're printing it right now 49 contracts 21 at 1430 being traded and you can see that now you have a $28 print right here in the time of sales where my pointer is at 1430 and you're at that resistance level now our lower level could be that if we break above here as we're headed in that direction that we have taken our bids lower because that would make us the lowest entry on the street out of all 10,141 contracts traded wouldn't matter SMF MMT would be the low entry and you have to call the truth the truth when the truth is well deserved and calculated and then executed and so therefore we're going to have the lower end of the market out but we're we know that right even so at 27.30 by 29.10 at this current little resistance level is that we're still wholesale 29.29 is a high however the spreads are going to get wider how to trade S&P index options and overbought cycles in various bull market runs so you're in a bull market run and you're going to buy a pullback from the overbought market so when the market pulls back you're going to cash in some dollars during that pullback phase so within the bull run you're going to have price exhaustion reversals and how to use 
the S&P 500. And as I speak, we're getting 36, 36, 36, 36. Look at those orders at $28. Look at that. Times four, 18 and 18. Wow. 18 is half at uh, volume wise. And this is live prints here. So we got some prints and we're making a market in here. And notice that $28 prints are a dollar thirty above the low. Okay. And I'm going to conclude how to trade index options with MMTs. Thank you for your help. Um, you do understand why we would lower our bid, right? That's correct. And what kind of bid did you calculate from using your training? And I'll tell you if it's close or not. Uh, the 1340 was on 25, uh, between okay. 25 and 2550. You gave me a little bit lower bid at 2460. Right. Uh, the 1360 uh, February was right. at um, about the same price you gave it to me. You gave it to me at 1780. Okay. And I was also watching NASDAQ, which we did not touch in, in this um, video, but it followed the same pattern. And I right, was sure. watching the 25, 25 February regular put. And uh, m my first entry was on the low of the day at 28.40, and my I secondary know. entry is at 25 or 25.50. Right now, and that was on the NASDAQ 100. That was a very nice entry, wasn't it? It was. And exit, because that was wholesale at the time. And we did that one because we did during that time frame. And that was a uh, wholesale entry on a 25 25 what month? Or it was. It was February a, uh, regular. Right. And the thing about the 2525 regular puts you in a position to make money, didn't it? Absolutely. On the bid and the ask, and that's it right here. Does that look right? 218, 2525 put? So, yes, 2840 was your entry. You were the low of the day. And, yes, people don't know how to get in the bid and ask. The 2525 put, NASDAQ 100, tighter than your than the one that we were looking at. That was at S&P uh, 1340, right? And less traded also. And less traded, the right? The volume on NASDAQ is lower than on S&P. Oh. So we're going to want to stick with S&P, right? Correct. Because if you're getting more liquidity buyers, then more people are thinking that the market needs to come down. That's why they're buying 6,800 of the 218, 1,300 puts, aren't they? I mean, that's that's below. That's where the neckline of that support level is going to be on the S&P 500 anyway. Is the S&P 500 overbought in our view? Yep. Okay, I'm going to show you how we're going to steal some of those bids that we've covered here today. Because the most important thing is what are these wholesale bids and why is it that there's 10,463 these contracts traded and we just seen a whole slew of them being bought at 28 now they're they're only marked up two dollars on the day and they will come down in value if the e-mini futures break higher once again I enjoy making market at wholesale bids and operating on that side of the market right here at a lower price. I get the spread. I walk away a winner. The people that buy it from me walk away a winner. And it's all going to be based on the NASDAQ 100. That's what that was, was about. So once again, the 1340 put in the NASDAQ, they're both different. I like this one here. They are getting huge volume. 